Hello YouTube and welcome to Form Validation with PHP Part 3 in our series and I'm Jeff and in this video we will complete the validation of our signup2.php script and add some security functions. So to begin with we have our signup2.php file open and in the last video we created this is set uh, statement here and we nested all of our the functional part of our code inside that. So we have our variables up here which have been declared and set to empty strings. So in the functional part of our code after the submit button is pressed we have if our if statement that tests and um, confirms that the submit button has been pressed, it will execute the functional part of our code. The first thing this code does is set the values of first name, last name, and email to the post values that were passed from the form. Now if the user forgets to enter information in one of those form fields, then what will be returned in this post variable is an empty string. So we can test for empty strings by using uh, an if statement. It'll say if empty, and then we'll check first name. So if first name is empty, we'll do something. And we will also check, while we're at it, the other two variables. So we have last name and we use the OR operator to check the third one, which is email. Okay, so this if statement says if uh, the first name is empty or the last name is empty or the email is empty, do something. And what we're actually going to have it do is uh, print out a message. So we have an error message up here. It's already been initialized and it's set to an empty string. So we're going to set that value here. And that will echo it on screen. So we'll say uh, one or more uh, required fields. are blank. And we'll put a little asterisk next to it. Here we go. One or more required fields are blank. It's a simple message. Okay, so this conditional statement here checks to um, checks those post values uh, or the, the variables here, first name, last name, email, make sure that they are not empty. So if they are empty, it's going to uh, set the error message and then that will echo out um, down here. Echo error message at the bottom of our page in the body of our of our HTML. Now the functional code we're going to put inside the else statement. So this is all nested inside the is set um, post. So this all occurs when the submit button is pressed. So we'll come down here and we'll nest this. There we go. So we closed our else block. That's all the else block. Okay. Now we can test this. Let's save it. In preview. Here's our form. We have first name, last name, email. If I just press submit, each of these values are blank and they should be sent with empty strings. Here we go. One or more required fields are blank. If I type something in first name, submit, I get the same message. If I type something in last name, press submit, there's our message again. Finally, I can test all three and I get the same response.
It's not until I have something in each of these fields where it actually goes through. And now I get my confirmation that it worked. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is secure this form a little bit. So whenever you have an input like we do here, uh, it opens up your site to security threats. So there's a few um, functions in PHP that helps us deal with uh, some of the more common threats to your site. Let's take a look at our code again. When we set the values of posts, it's essentially setting it to whatever the user typed in here in first name in the form field. So that information is later used in a query. And we have here this SQL query first name. So we're essentially parsing whatever the user types in into our T-Squeal statement down here and then sending that to our database. This is dangerous because uh, a, someone could put information in there that potentially changes information in your database or effectively changes this query to something that you did not uh, originally intend. So what we do is we, to guard against this is we run our um, initial uh, post variables through some PHP functions to try to protect it against this kind of attack. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to move my connection statement. So we're connecting to our database here on line 23. And I'm going to move that up here before my test. There we go. And the reason why we're doing that is because one of the functions we're going to use uh, requires this connection variable. So we want to make sure that that's available before we do this. Now, first name equals post first name. What we're going to do is we're going to set equal to um, strip slashes. then post. So what we've done is before we set first name, we're going to run it, run the post variable through our strip slashes function. Okay. And then once we've stripped it of slashes, we're going to oops, we're going to run first name through another function called strip tags. And in here, I can just pass it the first name variable. Okay. And then the final one is the big one here, which is my SQLI underscore real escape string. And this accepts two arguments. So it's going to be first name, but the first argument is actually the database connection. So we'll say dbc. Here we go. So these three lines, we've taken our initial first name variable and broken it out into three three different lines of code for security's sake. So strip slashes removes the uh, single slash from your from whatever is typed in the input. Strip tags removes uh, HTML tags. This will remove any HTML tags that are typed into that form field. And then MySQL I real escape string protects against um, SQL injection attacks where a user tries to type in some uh, T-Squeal into the uh, form field which is then passed to the query um, 
and effectively hijacks your query into uh, just about whatever the um, the attacker wants it to be. So this tr attempts to prevent that by escaping things like um, apostrophes. Okay, so the next step would be to do that to last name and email. So we can do that quickly. So we will strip slashes from last name and then we're going to just do some copy and pasting here. Try to speed this up. We have last name last name and then we just need to replace these last these variables in here as well. There we go. So now last name gets run through strip slashes, strip tags, and MySQL real escape. And then finally, we can do the email. Here we go. And then the last three here, or the last two, sorry. There we go. And finally, email. Okay. So now we've added some security features. Let's test this. We can save it and preview in Internet Explorer. First, if I try to submit this form without any information, we get our warning message. One or more required fields are blank. Now, if I try to add some information with apostrophes, which could potentially uh, change my SQL, and submit, this time it goes through, but the apostrophes have been escaped with the backslash. So you can see that data here, and this effectively protects it from the uh, SQL, the more common SQL injection attacks. So that covers uh, simple field validation and uh, some simple security features that you can add to your forms. Uh, in the next video, we're going to uh, start querying the database and checking the, the logic of our, of our project to make sure that it's, uh, it's correct. Uh, so thank you for watching.